So let's assume that you are, let's say 22 years old, okay? We're 22 years old. And of course, over time, you've had expenses, like you've had to go to university and all that. So suppose you have a debt of 500,000 or patch lakh, five lakhs is let's say basically to pay for your university and whatnot you've incurred this much debt what you expect is that you will get your first job when you are let's say 25 years old you will get your first job and you expect of course this is all expectation we don't really know what's going to happen so when i when we talk about uh, expectation uh, that's in the name of the chapter expectation right here that's what we're talking about we don't know what's going to happen but you expect that when you get your first job you are going to earn 50,000 every month okay or let's say let's let's simplify that and say you're going to earn 600,000 every year that's just 50,000 times 12 and what you also expect is that you're going to your income is going to go up by five percent every year so five percent annual increment uh what else you expect that over your lifetime you are going to pay a tax of 20 percent on all your income uh, you expect that you will retire when you are 65 years old and you expect to live until you are 80 years old okay so these are important you are 22 right now you have a debt uh, you will start your first job three years from now and you expect to earn 50,000 every month or 600,000 every year you expect a five percent annual increase in your income every year you expect to pay 20 percent tax on all your income you will start working at 25 you will retire at 65 and you will die at 80. of course there is absolutely no way we can know any of these numbers with any level of certainty okay but of course this is a theoretical framework so we're, we're just trying to do the best that we can so now the question that we had asked how much to spend how much money should you spend okay so here's what we are going to do okay mm -hmm. we're going to try and calculate your total income over your lifetime. So let's try and do that. Let's call that lifetime income. Call it whatever you want. Lifetime income is going to be equal to how much? So how would you go about doing that? Let's say for the first year that you're working, let me use another ink, you are earning 600,000, right? On this, of course, you pay a 20% tax. So 80% is what you can take home. For the next year, uh, your income is 600,000 times, remember the annual increment, so times 1.05. And of course, you pay tax so this is how much you earn. third year 600,000 times 0 0.8 square oh, sorry uh, 1.05 square because your income has increased twice now we're in year three and of course you pay tax and this is going to continue, right? This is going to continue until 40 years later, 
when you're 65 year old, your income is 600,000 times 1.05 to the power 40 times 0 0.8, which is the tax that you pay. Now, of course, we can calculate all of this using a calculator, but that seems like a pretty tedious process. Uh, if I were to simplify this a little bit, what I can write is we have 600,000 times 0 0.8. In here, we have 1 plus 1.05 plus 1.05 square plus 1.05 cube, so on until we get 1.05 to the power 40, right? Just basic metric. So outside 600,000 times 80, we have 480,000. On the inside, if you notice, we have a geometric series. We have a geometric series with, well, let me write this down. The series is 1, 1 1.05, 1.05 .05 square, 1.05 cube, so on until we stop at 1.054. So this is a geometric series. Let me write that down. Where the first term A is one, the ratio is 1.05 and the number of terms is 40. So if we want to find out this value, this is effectively sum of geometric series. So the sum of this series with 40 terms is, if you guys remember the formula, uh, A 1 minus R to the power N divided by 1 minus R. So A is 1, 1 minus R is 1.05 to the power 40 divided by 1 minus 1.05. And if you guys use your calculator, let me figure out how much this is to the power 40, 1 minus 8 squared divided by this, we get 120.80. So let's bring this down here. What we have is 480,000 times 120.80, which gives us, on, of course, this are all in Taka. This is Taka. Taka. So what we get here is 57983892 Taka. Okay, so this is what we call this lifetime income. You are going to earn this much money in your life, okay? But remember, you also had a debt. So minus debt. So your debt was 500,000. Doesn't look like a whole lot now, does it? So you're going to have 57, 483, 892. So you will have earned this much money when you retire at 65. Retire at 65, okay. You expect that you will live until you are 80 years old. Right now, you are 22 years old. So how much of your life do you have left? You will live for another 80 minus 22, 58 years. So the question, how much money should you spend? Let's come here. How much money to spend? 
Well, what you simply do is you take your income, that's 5748392, you divide it by the 58 years that you have, and what you get, use my calculator, 43892 divided by 58, and you are going to have 991. One zero two taka per year, or if you want to find it by per month divided by twelve, so you are going to have eighty two thousand five ninety two taka per month to spend in your life on average. So basically what we have done is we've projected how much money you could be expected to earn over your lifetime. Then we've projected how long we expect you to live. And we've just done a division and we found out that you can afford to spend uh, around 82 and a half thousand per month on average over your life. You should not be spending more than that. And if you want to spend less than that, you will have more money for the rest of your life. So that's, you know, I mean, a lot of arithmetic, but at the end of the day, this is a very simple calculation, right? Now uh, there are, I mean, and of course you guys can, even without me identifying the problems for you guys, uh, I'm sure you guys can come up with them yourselves. Like what are the problems with this approach? It's too simplistic. Uh, uh, expectation can be wrong. I mean, we are making an expectation like that's 40 years into the future. There's no way you can actually predict uh, exactly what your income will be and what the increments will be. So expectations can and probably will be wrong. Third one, you may not want constant consumption. So what this figure tells us, this 82,592, is that you can spend this much money every single month for the rest of your life. But you may not want to do that. You may want to save so that you have more money left over for later on and live more carefully right now. So that's another problem. Uh, what other problem is there? Uh, it ignores that there might be emergencies or the opposite, windfalls. Emergencies may deplete how much money you have, sudden windfalls like you win the lottery, that may suddenly increase your uh, how much assets you have. So if you sit and think about it, it's easy to come up with a lot of problems, that's fine. But keep in mind that this exercise is not meant to be a realistic demonstration of how people make their decisions but it's just a starting point from where we can begin our analysis. We are going to complicate things more in the rest of this uh, course and in the rest of your degree program, but we're just getting started. So there are a lot of problems with these issues, but it allows us to get the conversation started. And that's what we have done. Uh, so in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about some implications of this. Okay. Let's have...